Hey, Terrible UX here. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the Colossal Tussle event and why I think that Nissa of Shadowed Bows is such a powerful planeswalker in this event. Uh, so Nissa of Shadowed Bows has an ability which creates a Reclaim Zendikon token, which whenever a creature you control dies, will give the first creature in your hand a bunch of mana, or the last, and whenever you cast a creature, will return a creature from your graveyard to hand and give that creature a bunch of mana and make it very large. Um, so this ability, when combined with the last ride support from the uh, event, basically forms an infinite combo, assuming that you have enough uh, black and green gems on the battlefield. Uh, this works because the last ride support allows you to destroy one of your creatures whenever you play a creature. So when you play a creature, uh, you will return the first creature from your graveyard to your hand and it will get mana, and then you can destroy the creature with last ride, and the creature will get even more mana, and then you can cast that creature, and the first creature that you cast will get returned to your hand and gain mana, and so on and so forth, until your opponent dies. Uh, because last ride also drains your opponent for two whenever you cast, whenever you uh, have a non or a non-token creature die under your control. Uh, so I'm currently using this with Song of Creation in this node, uh, which is kind of a non-bow, because Song of Creation draws a bunch of cards, so it will fill your hand with things that aren't creatures and end the loop. Uh, but if this deck was not playing Song of Creation, this would very easily go infinite um, once you have your third ability active and enough green and black gems on the battlefield. Uh, also, while you can technically just drain your opponent out with this loop, um, it's probably not what you want to be doing because it just takes a really long time. Um, the loop timer will pop up a bunch and you have to do two clicks for each iteration of the loop. Uh, so generally you're just going to be killing them with the giant creatures that you get from this is third after you've dumped your graveyard into your battlefield. So I'm just going to uh, try to make mana and get loyalty here with matches and the like so that I can activate this third ability. And I probably shouldn't put Turn Timber Symbiosis as the first thing. That's probably better. Okay. Uh, still need to make mana. Cool. So I'll have enough to do this next turn. Or cast Song of Creation and something else, that is, not go off. Because this has song, it probably won't go off for real, um, but it will do some cool things. Uh, I have a very good match to make here, but it doesn't match horizontally, so I think I'm going to wait a turn. Now I'll try. Basically just looking for any match that gives a horizontal match. So this will do, sure. And ideally you do want to have a creature prepped for when you're going off with your act activation of your third ability, uh, but that's not a must. There's also no reason to kill your creatures before you have your third ability down. So I, I'm going to not click yes out of muscle memory to last ride there. That's probably the biggest uh, pitfall of this strategy is that you will become conditioned to click yes on last ride whenever you play a creature and blow it up. <laughs> Uh, that's probably not even actually that bad because once you get your, your abilities going, you're just going to be, 
Okay, I'm gonna wait. Once I get to like 30 loyalty, I'll activate Bitter Connection. Uh, does it even make sense or should I just do that now so that I can convert more gems? Since I don't have a creature in hand. Probably. And uh, I can't sack this for a creature, but I can. What? Why did my game freeze? Wait. Does that say not? Weird. I'm not sure why it didn't give me last ride. That was strange. Also, I drew a creature, so now I feel kind of silly. Uh, I'll cast that as a mutation so I get my land. Uh, why does Castle Garen have 15 supports? And again, I'm not going to blow this up, even though it's very tempting to kill this creature for, like, no value. Uh, I need seven more. I guess I'll put this up top so I can convert some gems eventually. No. That was weird. It, like, disappeared from my hand for a second. Um, so when Greg is using the last ride support, uh, Greg will always destroy the first creature under their control, uh, whenever they have more than one, which is generally useful, but if your opponent is playing this build, that's just going to be annoying, because they're just going to keep getting back creatures, um, as long as they have their third ability out. So, uh, I would either try to kill Greg before that happens, or pack some kind of uh, exile removal or graveyard hate to try to deal with this strategy. I'm going to disable Chittering Harvester so that it sticks around for when we want to go off. Because uh, we should be able to do that next turn, probably, as long as I cast this. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we'll gain a bunch of mana here and then discard all these cards. Um, Actually, yeah, I'll, sure, I'll do that, because I want more loyalty. Uh, and we should be well on the way to... Wow, okay. I guess I haven't done much in the way of achieving this objective so far, but hopefully that should change with... Okay, there we go. Got the third. With this. Uh, so I'm going to activate this ability, get some mana, and then try to go off. So I want to make a match that gets me mana, preferably, but also that doesn't destroy green or black gems, uh, because that will get me more mana. Right, and here's the part that's kind of annoying uh, with Song of Creation because Song of Creation is going to draw a bunch of cards that didn't come from your graveyard. So they're not going to have mana, uh, and you can run out of space in your hand to continue this loop. But we'll see how far we can get. So I'm just going to continue to kill creatures and resummon them, because killing the creatures is going to generate me a lot more mana um, than playing the creatures right now, because I only have like five black gems on the board, and I have lots more than that green gems. Actually, I'd pr probably say how many green gems I have with it. 13 green gems. Okay, that's not enough to cast a Chittering Harvester, though. So, thus ends the loop. So sad. Uh, but that's the gist of this deck. You can put whatever creatures you want um, in these slots that aren't your Conclave Naturalists, or whatever way you have to deal with supports if you don't have this card, or another creature that deals with enchantments that I don't know what it is. Um, then you can just dedicate all three of your slots to uh, objective-fulfilling creatures and be just extremely consistent. I say, okay, good. I did complete all the objectives and I'm not just blowing hot air. 
And maybe I shouldn't have matched green and black there. <laughs> that probably was not great in terms of like completing, uh, you know. But hopefully we'll just get enough mana. Okay, well, this is just dead. Or wait, Kiara, I'm Nissa. I'm not dead. But my creatures sure are. And then they come back. Uh, there's a five match, but I'm just gonna kill. This would normally go until my graveyard was empty with Nyssa. Um, I guess I could choose to not cast creatures here. That doesn't seem great. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have just... I, I should have stopped casting things immediately. There was not really a reason to do that. But I guess I would have had to disable the creature from my hand. Um, after that, I didn't have a choice. Because none of my creatures had... Are you sure you want to cast this card? Pop-up boxes on them. And when cards from your, come from your graveyard or library, they're just enabled by default. Uh, so... Let me do another game without Song of Creation. Uh, this is on the node where you can't play Mythics, or at least not if you want to complete the objectives. Um, so I am just playing, I believe, uh, Zendikar Reclamation, Turn Timber Reclamation, the one that gets landforming cards, instead of that. And it works well. It does its job. It gets a creature. So again, I'm just going to disable stuff until, excuse me, until I can kill my opponent. Oh, nice. Always want to be forming. And I think it's still worth it to take the, uh, hmm, do I want Realms Uncharted for possibly more mana? Probably. Mana's powerful. Uh, I think multiple matches are still what you want because they get you more loyalty even if they don't make as much mana initially. If there was a black match, I would take that, but... Um, I just want to convert gems right now. Okay, that's nice. And I'll turn that on, ditch this. Uh, I guess I'll turn that off and then grab Did I make any doubles here? I don't think so. Do this. Oh, I don't have a Castle Garant Brig yet. Okay, I'm glad I cast that in that case. Also, it got me a bunch of loyalty. Also, also, I've got this loyalty 5 match, which should make it the rest of the way there. And now I can start the chain. So I'm just going to cast a bunch of Woe Striders and make a bunch of tokens and kill my opponent. Hmm, this might not actually be enough black and green gems. Uh, so we'll see.
Yeah, this this might not be enough gems. I think that with the combination of both of them though, and not having um, Song of Creation on the battlefield, that it will work. Yeah, there we go. I think that means that this is just a loop. So I'm going to get to cast my creatures a bunch of times, summon all these goats, and drain my opponent for as many as I want. And at the end of this, I'll wind up with like a 48-48 horror and a very large snake with lifelink. And my opponent will wind up uh, with a lot less life than they started with. Do I need to make more goats? No, I do not. Okay, I wasn't sure if those goats got buffed by something. Okay, so now I can stop sacrificing the goats if I want to. Or rather, start sacrificing the goats. Uh... And that's probably not going to give me enough mana to cast the rest of the things that I want to. But, I mean, it gives me like half the mana that I need. So, two goats will... No, I don't want to stop this loop. I want to keep casting my goats. Uh, no, I don't actually want to kill any of my creatures. I'm good with just letting this all play out now. Anyway, uh, I, I think this demonstrates the loop. Um, I will kill this goat because I might have something in my deck, and also the goat just makes the rest of my creatures way, way bigger when I sacrifice it. Huh. I had more goats than I thought I did. But yeah. Ugin is just very dead. Uh, this horror thing is going to punch it single-handedly. And it looks like I'm running out of creature cards in my graveyard. Or at very least, time on my clock. Ah, there we go. That's not a creature. <sighs> so now the cycle can finally end. After having a 41-41 and a very large Woe Strider? Yeah, that's the name of that card. Cool. I'm not going to cast anything anymore. I'm just going to let Greg die. Oh. Or maybe I just don't have a choice. Anyway, uh, that's my expose on Nyssa. Um, I think that this is the Planeswalker that you should be playing on all of the Colossal Tussle nodes if you have it. If you don't have it, I would strongly recommend getting it because it's just really good. Um, even if you're not using it for this event, it's a very strong Planeswalker that's, that has very good recursion. Um, so if you have another way that's not a support that you get automatically to have your creatures die, you can also do very powerful things. Um, but in this specific circumstance, uh, she's insane. So, thanks for hanging out, and have a great day.